Why do you think we measure head circumference in children? It's so we can make sure your child's brain is developing appropriately. If the head circumference is too small, it may be a problem with brain development. And if the head circumference is too big, there may be a problem with something going on inside of the brain. Yesterday, I presented the case of a seven-month-old boy who was having increasing head circumference at his routine visits. And his mom did note that he was more fussy than normal and was spitting up more, but she just associated it with probably colic. After all, it was her first child, so she didn't really know what to expect. An ultrasound was done that showed an abnormality, and an MRI of the baby's brain was performed. Here is the MRI of the baby's brain that shows hydrocephalus, or markedly enlarged ventricles, and then this enhancing spot right here is actually a tumor sitting in the ventricle of the brain. You're telling me this baby has a brain tumor? This baby has a tumor called a choroid plexus papilloma. It's one of the most common types of brain tumors in infants. In fact, 10 to 20% of tumors in babies under one years old are tumors of the choroid plexus. I know you guys have all heard of cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. That's the fluid that bathes the brain and it's made by the choroid plexus. In the blue here, you can see that CSF circulates around the brain and the purple stuff is called the choroid plexus, which makes the CSF. And that choroid plexus is located in the ventricular system throughout the brain. So you can imagine that tumors of the choroid plexus can overproduce spinal fluid and cause hydrocephalus. Here is the cross section of our child's MRI of the brain, and you can see that this vividly enhancing lesion that lies within the atrium of the lateral ventricle. This is the most common location for these types of tumors. Okay, doctor, you're gonna have to back up a little bit because that was kind of confusing. I'll explain it a little easier, but the good news I'll start with, this is a benign tumor. Our brain has spinal fluid that gives the brain nutrients. That's made by a tissue called the choroid plexus. There can be benign tumors of the choroid plexus that over-secrete spinal fluid, and that causes a buildup of fluid on the brain. Too much fluid on the brain can cause increased pressure of the brain, and in kids, can cause the head to enlarge. That's because the baby's skull has not fully developed, and the fontanelles do not close in kids until about 18 months old. So if there are any changes inside of the head, it can cause the baby's head to get bigger, and that's one of the reasons why we we check head circumference. This can happen in kids that are older as well as adults, but is most commonly a tumor of infancy. When it's diagnosed in adults, the most common location is the fourth ventricle or the back part of the brain. The most common presenting sign is signs of increase into cranial pressure from hydrocephalus, and that includes nausea, vomiting, and headaches, as well as trouble with the visual fields. In kids younger than 18 months, the skull can actually enlarge and cause increased head circumference. On imaging, it's typically a vividly enhancing lobulated mass that's well-defined. And it often is described as being frond-like. Think of it like a fern. As I mentioned, choroid plexus papillomas are benign, but there is a malignant entity called a choroid plexus carcinoma. There is a little bit of overlap of how these appear on imaging, but these are more aggressive tumors that carry a significantly poor prognosis. The treatment of a choroid plexus papilloma is surgery, and a complete resection of the tumor almost carries a 100% success rate with no recurrence, meaning that removing the tumor is a complete cure. Some cases in which the tumor cannot be completely removed, there may be other treatments recommended on top of that, including chemotherapy and or radiation treatments. These tumors are vascular and the kids are often very small. Blood loss can be catastrophic during surgery, so sometimes preoperative embolization where we can decrease the blood flow to the tumor may be utilized. As you can imagine, the baby that I presented at the beginning of the video was sent to a pediatric neurosurgeon where a complete removal of the tumor was achieved and the baby did very well after surgery. Because the tumor is removed, typically CSF production is normalized and shunting may not be necessary. Most children can go on to live completely normal lives after this type of surgery. Remember, May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month where we raise awareness for different types of brain tumors and educate the community. I have presented a few cases over the past few weeks, but there are so many other types of brain tumors, and I'll continue to do my best to teach about as many of them as I possibly can. If you've ever wondered if I've covered a particular topic on a Sunday case study, you can go to my YouTube channel and search for that particular diagnosis. 
We continue to add on to them every single week. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next week.